All right, and here we are, game two between CDZ and IG Vitality. To go get the bands picked out for both teams, this is Brewmaster, Wisp, and Undying for CDC, Magnus, Grimstroke, and Elder Titan for IG Vitality. It was a, uh, seconds. again, a bit of an interesting call to let a Phantom Assassin through. We've seen it multiple times tonight. Now first pick on the Terrorblade. That's going to be Dust playing the Terrorblade. Phantom Assassin played by Eve once again. And I believe they, you know, CDC were able to just destroy with the Phantom Assassin in the last game with XM on the Medusa. So giving it back to them one more time is definitely an interesting strategy for IGV. Dare I say bold move, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off. And uh, now Terrorblade first pick. And I worry about Terrorblade first pick. It, it honestly just gives such an early looking into your draft. So now you have to worry about... You have to worry about a multitude of things here. With getting your TB countered. And, you know, picking up the Phantom Assassin first, and, and now TB Shadow Demon, you're basically showing your hand. That's your first two picks, and, and you've already shown your hand. You're up against the Phantom Assassin to start this. So you need to make sure that you draft and ban accordingly. Phantom Assassin already here. We'll see what they're going to be looking for in terms of supports. Shadow Shaman's still on the board, as well as... Uh, this Lich, possibly see Rubik come out again. A lot a lot of those stun supports that we've been seeing so much uh, that give that extra lockdown, especially with the Phantom Assassin who's looking for open space, maybe some harassment early, but you do like that lockdown with, say, a Shadow Shaman. And Shadow Shaman early, too, his harassment's really good. You're able to hit pretty hard with the second highest base damage in the game. And they go to the Phoenix. So Phoenix here with the Phantom Assassin. I like it. It's team fight oriented. It makes me think that maybe they're going to go into uh, more towards the team fight than just the pickoff potential with the Phantom Assassin. But we'll see what they want to do over mid. If they want to work early. If they want to be able to keep some space for the Phantom Assassin. Or if they want to go back to the Medusa where you're working with, uh, you know, getting time for the Medusa instead of the Phantom Assassin and probably moving with the Phantom Assassin at level 6. Then you take a look over for IG Vitality with the Terrorblade and the Shadow Demon. We'll see how long they're willing to wait on the Terrorblade to finally find himself a little bit of a power spike to continue fighting through CEC. But already, I I'm not sure about this Terrorblade against the PA. It's definitely a tough fight. Got Sand King banned out, Centaur banned out. You don't want to give up that tanky hero. Seconds. Five seconds remaining. Ooh. Just getting booted from the game for no reason. Interestingly enough. Get any salt in your lungs? Seems to happen every now and then. But Enigma banned out. So again, staying away from that team fight that was kind of hinted at with the Fe the Phoenix uh, pick here for Ten CDC. Seconds. Radiance turn to pick. Dusk. And they go into the Tusk. Ten seconds. So Tusk Five Shadow Demon Terrorblade. I like the Tusk here. The Tusk too, like towards the mid game when you've picked up a blink dagger, when you're able to blink and get that walrus punch out, really does work well with the Terrorblade too. You start with that and then you go into the Metamorphosis. I 
things get tricky immediately against that. Now they go into the Lich. This is what I was talking about. A support that gives you control. Again, into the team fight too. So, Supernova with the Sinister Gaze, the Ice Blast. Batrider picked up. This is an early Batrider pick though, so... There definitely could be possibly a Legion for CDEC, which is usually the counter of the Batrider, or, a, or, or an Oracle. You could always throw Phoenix in the three, have Lich and Oracle as your supports. You want the Dispel, or maybe you go Abaddon. We don't see Abaddon that much anymore, but usually you are looking for that counter. Five seconds remaining. So let's see what they're looking for for CDC to round out this second phase of picks. We'll see what they got. With the Lich, with the Phoenix. You know, I don't really think the Legion's the worst pick, and it's one of the things I think of when you see this Bat Rider. I was thinking Void, but wasn't really sure with the PA pick already taken out and or taken up. And now you've got Phantom Assassin and Void. Obviously, the team fight is pretty heavy here from CDC. You could put an egg on the side of the uh, Chronosphere. And then, of course, Lich can go with the Ice Blast inside the uh, Chronosphere. Uh, I think it's okay. I think it's committing heavily to these Five melee seconds. cores. That might be a little bit of a problem. But with the Chronosphere, you can lock down this Terra Blade and focus him and possibly take him out of these fights every single time. Fifth band's coming out. Don't know if it's going to be a mid-needed. If they're going to go safe lane on the Phantom Assassin off lane on the uh, Faceless Void. Because they could go meet on the Phantom Assassin and safe lane on the Void. There's a lot of things that they can do with these uh, cores. That they, they just don't have to be your typical uh, safe lane, off lane, off lane, safe lane. But they'll ban out the Marana. They might be looking for a mid here. They could go into the OD if they wanted to on the side of CDC for the mid for IG Vitality. It looks like it's going to be an off lane actually in the Bat Rider and Tusk Shadow Demon your supports with Terrorblade in the safe lane. So both teams do need a mid. If they want more control on IG Vitality, they could go to the puck. Ten seconds. Five seconds remaining. Radiant's turn to pay. They go Rubik. Okay. So they throw this Rubik into the mix. Interesting. Even more lockdown. And I think that might be a Rubik mid. We'll see who XM does end up picking. seconds remaining and we'll see what's finally here for IG Vitality what they want to go for they could go with something pretty safe in terms of possibly a DK here or if they want to go with the puck
And they go Medusa this time around. So they don't go for the control, they go for the right click. And XM will be on that Rubik, so it's going to be a mid Rubik. So, one, two, three on the Phantom Assassin, Shaker on the Phoenix, Ray on the Lich, Eve on the Faceless Void, XM on the Rubik. Means off lane Phantom Assassin with the safe lane Faceless Void mid Rubik. And then safe lane Dust on the Terror Blade, Daydream on the Shadow Demon, Meow Meow with the four position Tusk, Beyond the off lane Batrider mid Butterfly Effect Medusa. Get a pause coming out immediately. Mm, divine. a little bit of lag here. XM in the mid lane. He'll be up against this Medusa. I mean, it's going to be tough. Medusa against this Rubik. I don't expect Rubik to do too well, but we'll see. ready to play this last and final game in just a moment. Take a look at what these matchups are going to be. It'll be safe lane Eve on this Faceless Void. He'll be up against Beyond on the Batrider. It'll be interesting to see whether or not they're going to be aggressive with this Batrider. It's usually what you see with the uh, Sticky Napalm as well as the um, Firefly, of course. The question becomes, how are they going to keep the Faceless Void close? And you work with possibly the stun of Meow Meow to get in there with shards. But you have to do that after the Time Walk's been used. So your aggression comes early when Time Walk's got a, a high cooldown in the early levels. 24 seconds, 18 seconds in levels 1 and 2 are definitely your opportunities to get something done. Look for a quick level 2 on a Beyond to get that Firefly available. Put those Sticky Napalm charges on and then run your way to try and get your kill onto the Faceless Void. You take a look over mid, it's Butterfly Effect on this Medusa against the Rubik. Uh, I think Butterfly Effect should have an easy time over mid. Rubik uh, f with Fade Bolt may not be much of a problem. Then you take a look over in the off lane or the long lane for Dire, as you've got 1, 2, 3 here with Shaker and Ray. and I don't know if they're going to keep both supports here. I doubt it. But, uh, you know, you're just trying to make sure that this PA doesn't find that much farm. But if they keep the control here with the Sinister Gaze as well as the Frost Blast, Stifling Dagger, the slows that come through, we could see Phantom Assassin get a couple of kills in this lane. It really does depend on whether or not they're willing to keep both supports here. 
um, and sacrifice probably farm for their faceless void. Now we get the good stuff. For once, we're in agreement. So, looking over mid. Shaker gonna go for the courier kill? How not often do we see this anymore? And the courier's coming through mid. They actually stopped the courier at the tier 1 tower for the radiant side, and there it is. One, Icarus dive, and two. Courier, courier kill down. coming in, and that's exactly what you need to do. Because you need to stop this regen from coming out for the Medusa. If you can get the Fade Bolts in and, and really hurt this Butterfly Effect Medusa, make it harder for him to lane, then you have an opportunity for Rubik to do decently well here. They've actually moved the Batrider over towards top. More of an opportunity, I'd say, to get a kill in this top lane. But Cycling Dagger coming out on a Beyond. That's the problem he's going to have to deal with. This, st this Sticky Napalm will come out. But the Stifling Dagger is going to make sure that he can't really dive in too deep. So the matchup here is a little bit interesting. The Frost Blast comes out on a Mian Mian. The chase is on with the Stifling Dagger. Six stacks of Sticky Napalm. Still level one, though, is Beyond. Disruption through onto the Phoenix of Shaker. He's taking a little bit of damage as we look over mid. With Dust here in the offlane on this Terra Blade, what you're looking for, at least with the Metamorphosis early is that he's just looking to get some farm. He's up against Eve. Eve's going to get his right clicks in. He's going to be able to find his farm. Dust, though, making sure that he could stay and keep his distance away from this Faceless Void, using the Metamorphosis to find those early last hits. Without it, he'll do what he can to find the last hits here and have to be very cautious, cautious without Daydream nearby. Butterfly Effect getting a very beneficial regen rune as he is out of regen and no courier. As it's finally back up. Frost Blast comes out and there's the Sticky Napalm. Three stacks here onto the Phantom Assassin. Courier coming over for a second try with two circlets, a salve, as well as slippers of agility. This Courier will make its way over. Shaker getting chased on with Daydream here. Dust, he's level 2 as well. Looking for a possible bash. He won't be able to get the kill though. But Eve, continuing to pressure the Terrible back. You take a look at where the CS is for the side of the Radiant. Three heroes here have top of the CS chart. But 1, 2, 3 and a little bit of trouble. Beyond might go down. He takes one more shot from Mian Mian, or one more shot from Ray to get the kill. Ray ends up getting Beyond. Beyond gets the kill in the first blood over on 1, 2, 3. So, looking okay as a trade there for Beyond, but again, with the CS, it has really been in favor of the Radiant side. Over mid, it's been much better for XM than I really thought it would be, and that came with the Courier kill. Having that Courier kill and keeping that region away from the Medusa early made this a bit easier for XM and able to stay in this lane. He's about even in terms of experience. Butterfly Effect looking to maybe get the kill on an XM as he stays a little bit too close. Mystic Snake would have been a problem for him, but he backs off wisely enough and uh, has himself that bottle, so he'll be able to regen just a bit. Blast on to Mian Mian. Take a look over at bottom. They've got the disruption on to Eve. Trying to chase with the Metamorphosis. Eve does have Time Walk. Gets a little bit of health back and is able to back off just a bit. 
But one, two, three. Mian Mian getting hit with this stifling dagger. Has to be careful and Phantom Assassin. The worst of the three in terms of cores in CS. The ice shards don't block in Ray. Daydream going down for the dead. just over here in the river, and that was to Shaker, surprisingly enough. Three stacks of the Sticky Napalm. Again, it's hard to come in onto the, the uh, Phantom Assassin, but only level three for the time being. Level two in the Stifling Dagger to try and last hit, as it's gotten much harder against this Bat Rider. Butterfly effect at level 6, XM at level 6 as well. He's got mana shield, which is nice with the two null talismans. No boots yet for this Rubik. As the Mystic Snake gets thrown out, the Fable thrown at Butterfly effect. Taking a little bit of damage was the Terribly, but he's back over to Shrine. Taking a look over top, Beyond hit with Stifling Dagger. They're continuing to go in with the Frost Shield. Beyond on the run, there's the Firefly trying to get away. Mamian's here though with the Flame Break and Tag Team's used. So now Rain a little bit of trouble as Beyond looks back for just a moment, but well, if that look back, he gets killed off by the Frost Blast coming in from Ray. Mian Mian has to be careful because Ray does have himself the stick. The Frost Blast again. There's the Snowball. Still trying to run is the Lich. One more right click. Oh, the Stifling Dagger though. Now with the Frost Blast, now gets the shards out to get the kill, but the Phantom Strike in. One more shot gets the kill on Mian Mian. Letting 1, 2, 3 really find his way back into this lane. And they look over at Beyond once more because XM is here with the Fable. Telekinesis lifting him up. Firefly, 3 stacks, 4 stacks, Sticky Napalm. Oh boy, Fable comes in and there's another kill over top for the side of CDC. Yeah man, again, trying to go in on a 1, 2, 3, but Ray is here. Frost Shield placed on a 1, 2, 3. Gets the shards to back off. Dust going down over bottom. This is to Eve. And that was with the Chronosphere. And falling. That's over top once again. Taking a look at this Rubik, Arcane Supremacy. With the Fade Bolt, the damage reduction, as well as the damage that it does, is just really devastating on a butterfly effect early. Four Wraith Band build for the Medusa. Okay. Daydream here. Tranquil's picked up on Shaker. Daydream, let's see what he's able to do. Moving forward, he's right under his nose with the Invis Room. Places the ward, so he knows exactly where that's going to be down. He doesn't go after Shaker and doesn't reveal to the side of CDC that he's right there. Which I think is the better play because it makes sure that they know where that ward is and they can get the D ward easily. But over at top, we take a look. Beyond a little bit of trouble. The Frost Shield on the 1, 2, 3. Ray also trying to chase Beyond. Getting hit with the Stifling Dagger. Ends up dying. Easy kill there. And Eve just continuing to farm in this lane. Going for the Mask of Madness to be effective in that Chronosphere early. And now, let's see what they're able to find. Daydream, Butterfly Effect, Chrono on cooldown for another 23 seconds. They get the vision here. Butterfly Effect would be a hard sell to get a kill on the Mystic Snake being thrown at the Phoenix. So Shaker has to be a little bit careful. Again, Batrider, not with this lasso just yet. 
Yeah, shards finally come through as well as the walrus punch. Mian Mian already level 6. The phantom strike away. They've also got the rotation coming over from Shaker, who's only level 4. of the frost shield's out there, no level 6 is still for beyond. So going in on this kill on a 1-2-3 might be a little bit of a problem, but they finally get the fable off. The snowball comes through as well as the telekinesis. 1-2-3 might die, but the phantom strike onto the high ground. Now they've got dust coming in with the metamorphosis. CDC, they lose 1-2-3. And the lasso comes in onto the lich. The chase is on, but the Fate Bolt is there. They'll trade one for one. Chronosphere coming through. That's on a Dust. Let's see if he's got the damage. It also hit on the Miami end. Dust now gets the Sunder. Oh, boy, but the time dilation and another two kills. Shaker and Eve go down. Dust gets the double kill, and IG Vitality come out ahead. Ray also on the high ground, but he's got a TP, so he's fine. 10 minutes in. We'll switch it over to the net worth. Dagger is going to be coming in next for the Tusk. Icarus dive over, looking for the stolen charts to block him beyond, but they've got the Frost Blast getting him low. Now the Snowball all the way over with the Walrus Punch taking out Shaker. The time dilation is going to come out on a couple of these heroes with a nice telekinesis through onto beyond. They'll get themselves one. They're looking for more, and now they'll find a second on a Daydream. XM gets the double kill and continuing forward to try and find Yam Yan. Chase is on, the Frost Blast is there, the shards block him out, but the Fable comes through, as well as their own shards blocking him, Mian Mian. And Frost Blast from Ray gets the kill, and a couple there for CDC. All the while, 1, 2, 3 still continuing to farm up. So he doesn't really quite mind. But they are inside the jungle of the Dire side, IG Vitality. Sitting ahead in terms of net worth is they've had a very good start from Butterfly Effect over me with the Mask of Madness 4 Wraith Bands going into the Dragonlands next. One, two, three. Ice Shards not blocking him in. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Tower taken by Eve, and now he goes for the kill on a Daydream. First hit bash, two bashes coming through. Easy kill there. Meanwhile, over bottom, the snowball comes across all the way to Phantom Sass, and they've got themselves the last, so that's going to lock in the PA. They also drop down the Supernova. Not too, too sure how well that's going to work. The Sunder on top of that, raising a lot of trouble with the Frost Shield on top. Beyond chasing in. Nice Chain Frost doing a lot of damage, bouncing back and forth. They've got the Chronosphere on top of that. That's going to be one on to Dust, as well as Mian Mian going down, but XM falls to Butterfly Effect. Doing a lot of damage in this exchange. They'll lose four. Beyond is able to make his way out. Woo. Four for three there. About even in gold exchange. XP going the way of butterfly effect by quite a bit. Getting close to that dragon lance. Still IG Vitality, although they're only up a little bit of net worth, it seems as though. And feels as though that they are ahead in terms of damage that's coming in from their Medusa. Sitting top of the net worth over a thousand ahead of this Faceless Void. And the thing is, they're already ahead with that. You wonder how much does CDC stand a chance when Dust finally finds his farm. He does have a Dragonlance, so he's not doing too poorly. But he might be able to really push ahead. If we see IG Vitality win another fight or two. But the Desolator will be first for, for CDC's 1, 2, 3. Now you take a look over at Eve. He's got the Mask of Madness going into the Fusil Blade. Yeah, man. Chase needing another bash. Trying to get it to resolve is Eve. And now the Time Walk again. Away from the tower as he was hit with that Walrus Punch. Blink. Telekinesis. Daydream. 
Trying to do all he can with Shaker coming over. The disruption hits on Eve, but the Fade Bolt coming through. And the Icarus dive on top to get the easy kill. Rotation of Beyond. He doesn't have Blink Dagger to get in on this. Shadow Poison stolen by XM. Butterfly Effect doing a lot of damage. The Mystic Snake bounces back towards him. The Ice Shard is not going to land. They do hit, but they just don't block in the Rubik. And this is opening up a lot of space for dust, and that's exactly what you need. Meanwhile, bottom frost shield comes out. Chronosphere trying to land both Man Man as well as the Bat Rider, but he doesn't grab them both, and even a lot of trouble. We've got the Supernova laid out, but. There's no way that that's going to survive. Now the disruption comes through as well as the stone gaze. One, two, three goes into a losing battle. And they'll lose three. Not exactly sure what the plan was there by uh, CDC's one, two, three on the fa fa Phantom Assassin. But it was not a wise choice, that's for sure. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Need this void to get farmed up if you're CDC. Would like to see him get that defusal blade. The Desolator has been the item on Phantom Assassin's list for quite some time, and it looks as though he might even just switch over to the Battle Fury, knowing that he needs a little bit of a comeback. So to get that Battle Fury, continue to farm and, and try and find the way back into it for CDC is the plan. But when you're trying to make time and you're trying to find those next couple of items against a Medusa as well as a Terra Blade, I really do think that puts you in a little bit of trouble. So the question becomes, what can you really do? Oh, that word immediately dewarded. No Sinister Gaze, no value point into Sinister Gaze yet. I would have liked to see one value point there to just have that lockdown, but unfortunately for CDC, they just didn't go that direction. It's a 5,000 net worth for IG Vitality right now. Beyond coming over. Does he have his Blink Tiger yet? No, he doesn't. He's actually gone into the drums. Hurricane Pike finished off here for the Medusa. Going straight into the Scotty. And then Terrorblade, he's almost finished off the Manta style. About halfway towards that ulti orb. And once he gets that, I, I think that Terrorblade's ready to really just fight. Dire's bottom tower won't last long. Dire structures are fortified. So Void will TP over. I believe that's looking for a smoke. And there it is from the Lich. Look at the Diffusal Blade. They'll wait on that. They'll move forward a little bit. They don't want to waste timing here. As Shaker, he'll be involved in the smoke as well. Four heroes coming over. They're going to look into the jungle to try and take out a couple of these heroes on the side of IGV. They need to pull themselves back into it. It's a 6,000 net worth deficit that they really can't handle at the moment. They need kills here on the side of CDEC. They're looking to find Dust. That would be huge. Chronosphere laid down immediately with the rotation coming over. Ice Blast on top of that. They'll get the kill into Dust. Dust coming over. If they can get one on Eve, that could be a problem. But they get the Supernova to come on through as well as the Telekinesis on a butterfly effect. This fight's actually taking place over towards the Shrine. Is this one over here with the Faceless Void? They get the kill on a Ray. They get the kill on a Eve. Now they look over at the Rubik who's trying to get out of here with Shaker. He makes his way out as does the Rubik. But they lose the Void. Only taking out this... Terribly, and that's all of a sudden not really worth it. To get that kill does slow him down, but 
overall, when you lose the Void, you want the Void to survive to be able to push forward to this BKB, but him dying negates this move. Telekinesis on the beyond now trying to get the kill. They've got the sword of the diffusal blade moving in now with the time walk in that bash In that bash to come through and come into the works here for Eve and continuing forward for butterfly effect Maybe not the move to go for it the stone gaze and now the damage with the walrus punch hitting to Oblivion was that Rubik now they look over to get the kill on a butterfly effect But they've got the sinister gaze the snowballs there to avoid it butterfly effect and Miami and go over towards Eve by effect, low, ends up surviving. There's the disruption to keep him alive. Dust gets the kill on the Eve. Now they move over for more with the Metamorphosis being used by the Terror Blade. Shaker's able to get out. Two heroes dead on CDC. That's two cores gone. And IG Vitality continuing to extend their lead. Walrus oh, Punch on a Shaker. And they also... We'll find the Icarus dive. There's the supernova. Mian Mian. One shot away from Shaker going down. And now Mian Mian trying to TP away with the Chain Frost coming out. He ends up dying. They look over at Dust doing a lot of damage here. And they've stolen the reflection. Or the Conjure image actually. Sunder comes through. One, two, three. Gets a kill. They look over at Dust. They're finding another one possibly. This could be three for the side of CDC. Something they desperately need. And they'll get it. In the Roche they go, hopefully, to find this Aegis and not be countered here, if you're a CDC fan. And they do get the Battle Fury eventually. Middle tower is under attack. So now that you've got this battle fury here on the Phantom Assassin, it's a way back into the game for one, two, three to continue farming, looking for the BKB. But Faceless Boy, he's also looking for the BKB. Now they've got this Aegis set up, and XM trying to do all he can on the Rubik. Blink Dagger with the Aether Lens and two Null Talismans. The Blink Forward looking for the Lasso on a Ray, but the Force Staff. Just getting away from beyond. Medusa still working with so much gold here and not being slowed down at all. They're both looking for Scotties, the Terraboid, and the Medusa. Matt Rider's got the Blink Tiger and the Drums looking for a four staff of his own. Shadow Demon going into the Glimmer Cape. IG Vitality, they've lost 2,000 in their net worth. Lee, that was 8,000. But again, CDC trying to march their way back, trying to farm their way back in this game and doing the best they can with what they've got. They've got this Aegis, which they don't have to fight with. They can sit back. They're not going to fight into the Aegis on the side of IG Vitality unless they feel comfortable enough to take the fight with the extra life. And they might with the Scotty finally finished off on the Medusa. But for now, what you're using this Aegis for is to continue farming, find those next items, and make sure that you're ready to find the next exchange. One, two, three, coming over. With the Blur. Ray has that four staff, and that's come in crucial as he's gone three into the sinister gaze. They might even look to fight here. Eve moving over, spots the illusions, and now Eve taking so much damage, forced the time walk back. Eve moving over as time walk in a moment. There's the sinister gaze. Time dilation comes out with the disruption hitting, stifling dagger, and daydreams dead. 
So they do find a kill on the exit plan of IG Vitality, which is nice. But they, again, still need a little bit more farm on these heroes. 1, 2, 3 needs this BKB. Take a look over the face with Void. It would be nice to see him get a BKB as well. There's a lot here from IG Vitality that he can use with that, use to avoid with that BKB. skipping his BKB and going into the Manta style. We'll see how that pays off for him. Force that fear for the Rubik. He'll be going into the Dagon. Actually, Terraboy goes away from his Scotty and goes into the BKB instead. Are they smoking here? They do have smoke. They could go for it. Just need to make sure that the vision isn't nearby. Phoenix has Shiva's. He's got that 90 gold per minute talent. Rubik for right now with the cast range as well as the 200 health. Bottom tower is under there goes the bottom tier too. So they've got the vision on Beyond Miamiana as well as Dust. Coming over will be Eve. Oh no! God! It hurts to see. It hurts to see so badly. Because now the lasso comes in, the lockdown, his faceless void. They've also got the stone gaze, the time walk away, or at least attempting to. The beat can be popped by dust. They look over at Miami, Miami, and there's the Icarus Dive over. The age is going to be reclaimed. Tag team picked up by Rubik. They don't lose anyone. Somehow, the Radiant don't lose anything. Ugh. You hate to see it. But it is a part of this game when you lose yourself a fight just based on one poor ability thrown. Nice shards laid down. And considering the fact that they don't have Supernova and they don't have Chronosphere or the Chain Frost, they did a good job of holding. That was horrific to watch. The BKB picked up here 10 seconds for this Phantom Assassin going into the Basher next. And this Battle Fury, while not being totally even in this game, this Battle Fury has really helped the Phantom Assassin find the farm again. They actually smoke up, and they're going to look to fight. 10 seconds until Chain Frost, 16 seconds until the Supernova. That means 23 seconds until the Void gets his Chronosphere. But the smoke's broken. Icarus Dive comes through. There's the Blink with the Stone Gaze coming out immediately. They've got the Telekinesis as well as Butter Beyond Butterfly Effect getting hit up by the Disruption to keep him alive for a moment longer. XM's already dead. The double kill is there as they take out Ray. The Supernova on the back lines that they don't even care about. The BKB is going to be popped by 1, 2, 3, but the damage is there. For IGV to get this kill, three heroes dead on the side of CDC. And it is honestly a questionable attempt. Not exactly sure what they were looking for there. But uh, they lose three, and, and now it's time to push meta up in 20. Icarus dive, Shiva's coming through beyond. 
This is okay. The Frost Shield laid on in the tower. They'll take the tier 3. They'll look for the set of racks. Amorphosis coming through and Dust continuing to make way here with Butterfly Effect. Try and finish off this game and split the best of two in a 1-1 change. But BKB popped by Dust just to throw that Sunder. Eve he does have the Chronosphere, but he's got to be careful. The Telekinesis comes out as well as the Sinister Gaze. They look for the kill on a raid. They'll get it. And now Beyond moving in, but nice man to style. They get the bash on a Beyond. Pushing him back, but they've already gotten themselves the melee racks. Dyers are scanning for enemies. Only a Time is good. Still here. Fifteen thousand net worth lead for the side of IG Vitality with uh, two of the best late game heroes in Dota 2 at the moment with Terrorblade and Medusa. Desolator for the Tusk. Butterfly effect into the MKB. Beyond going for the BKB. Daydream, he wants a gem. And then Terrorblade going for the Butterfly. Take a look at the side of CDC. Basher still for the Phantom Assassin. MKB for the Faceless Void. Rubik going into the Dagon 5. Radiance for the Phoenix. We're even able to find it. Is up and IGB go right into the pit. Scan comes through CDC. They have a shot, they need the perfect chronosphere. Dust is gonna stay on the outlines with the illusion coming forward. Eve goes in, and there's the Chrono with a the Snowball. They've got the Supernova. Let's see what they're able to do, but look at the right-click damage coming in from Dust. The Supernova gets off, stuns up a couple of these heroes. They look for the Aegis, but it's going to be picked up by Butterfly Effect. They'll lose the Void. They'll lose the Lich as well as the Phoenix. Now they look over the Phantom Assassin with the BKB, but he's already gone. Four heroes dead. XM trying to get out here with the Firefly. He'll get to the high ground, TPing away, or at least attempting to, and does find his escape. They do get the kill on a Beyond, but... Who's four in the process and Aegis picked up by the Medusa? So there's the Vibat coming out from the Phantom Assassin as well as the Phoenix to try and hold here. XM comes through with a Firefly. Snowball across. Mian Mian. Aggressive. And paying for it. Now an eighteen thousand net worth lead. IG Vitality. So they only lose the Tusk while going for that tier 3 over mid. Seemingly no way back into this for CDC against these two late game heroes of the Terrorblade as well as the Medusa unless they have the perfect fight which was close to what they had in the Roche Pit attempt and it still didn't work out. They just are lacking a lot of the damage here. Unable to really 
find a great game plan and make anything work. They're trying to bring down Radiant's top down. Blink forward. And man, not finding anything, but they'll get the tier 2 over top as well as the shrine. They're still holding out of the Aegis on Medusa while waiting for the Satanic. There it is. Dyer's bottom tower couldn't withstand the tide. So again, they'll try to high ground with this Aegis as well as the Satanic, making it really hard for them to get into the face of Butterfly Effect, continuing to steal the Spell Shield. Now the Stifling Dagger comes out. Get the Melee Racks, or the Range Racks, excuse me, and then the Melee Racks. Icarus Dive, Telekinesis. Those Butterfly Effect back. Aegis expiring in about a minute. You continue to throw the stifling dagger. The problem is, where's your follow-up? You look for the sinister gaze, but the right hook you take afterwards when you get so close is so detrimental to your life on this lich that it, it's almost not even worth it. Smoke comes out, but CDC doesn't look like they're going to leave their base. They just to be reclaimed in just a moment. The lasso comes through on an illusion. Now they've got the stifling dagger that bashes up butterfly effect for a moment. Sunray on top. Now the stolen lasso brings him beyond. They might be able to get the kill. Ray getting low. He throws the chain frost. That's going to bounce around a Mian Mian. They've got themselves one chronosphere on a two. Let's see if they've got any follow up to this, but the stone gaze is there. So it's so hard for them to come back in. They look over the supernova. It won't pop. They lost the lich as well, and. Two heroes dead with the buyback coming in from Yam Yam. They look over at Eve, no mana, but there's the cheese eaten. He time walks over with a disruption on Daydream. Trying to get this kill. They'll look for the Shadow Demon. He's able to use that Glimmer Cape surviving for now. They'll finally finish him off, but this is just about Megas as they lose one, two, three on the low ground. He's got no buyback, so that should just be it. There's Megas. Mian Mian surviving. Taking a bit of damage, but he'll eventually fall. Fusel coming out onto Butterfly Effect, trying to slow him down to get this kill. They don't have Chronosphere to throw, and now a lot of damage comes through with the Sunder being used by Dust. He's still low health, and now here with a Disruption to try and survive a little bit longer. The damage comes out from Butterfly Effect to push back XM Ray and end this Faceless Void of Eve. Now they're down to just the Ancient being a lot. So 24,000 net worth lead, Ancient exposed on the side of CDC. And meta up in 30. Is 
the Radiant side trying to defend from Megas at the moment. <clears throat> Going into the Maelstrom on the Faceless Void. Send in the Medusa Illusions and... They're just able to continue pushing with Butterfly Effect now. Stepping on the welcome mat of this base. Telekinesis comes through. Chronosphere laid down on the Butterfly Effect before the Stone Gate is able to come off. They've got the lasso. That comes in on X. And they'll get themselves the kill onto the Rubik. They've also taken out the Lich. Supernova on the back lines. It's not really going to do much of anything. Now the Stone Gaze comes out from Butterfly Effect as they're continuing to chase. They'll look for the Icarus Dive into the Supernova. But you're right next to Dust. You're right next to Butterfly Effect. And it won't go off. One, two, three. Trying to get the kill on a Dust. There's the Sunder getting the kill. Looking for more. Looking over at XM. And he's got the Ghost Scepter to survive. But GG's called anyways. The Ancient will be taken by the Creeps. So that is it for the day. Three series of two. IV, IG Vitality, Butterfly Effect 11, 0, and 8 doing a really good job in this game. They split the series one apiece. 8, 8, and 21 for Man, Man, Man Dust 9, 4, and 9. Really good job there from the Medusa. And if you take a look at the graph, it was always in the favor of IG Vitality. So they take the, the split. And with that, we are done for the day six games about seven hours of casting no six hours of casting and it was fun had a little bit of an emergency uh on the second on the first game of the series and i apologize for that again um just i had to make sure that, the, that it was a personal emergency that i had to deal with and i am again really sorry so um i apologize for that we'll be back tomorrow with more dpl tomorrow's DPL goes as follows. We have Aster against Tai Chi, IG against Newbie, King Gaming against Tai Chi on uh, starting at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Or, yeah, starting at 2 o'clock tomorrow. And then December 9th, starting at 1 o'clock the next day, is IG Vitality versus Vici, Aster versus IG, CDC versus Ehome, Newbie versus Tai Chi. So some, some pretty decent games coming in on that last day. And then playoffs are the 28th of December. So two more days of this, and uh, we'll see what we're able to do here uh, in terms of excitement, hype, and casting and whatnot. But I'm your caster, B-Cop. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you so much. Love you so much, and uh, enjoy your night.